Today, I'll tell you about the most widespread noble gas in the observable universe, which can have unique superfluidity properties at extremely low temperatures. Guys, please meet helium. In the periodic table, this element is located in the top right corner. It is easy to find it by its atomic number, too. I think people acquaint themselves with this inert gas from childhood. Because of its lightness in relation to air, helium is perfect for inflating festival balloons. Children love so much. Because of the fact that molar mass of helium is almost 7 times smaller than that of air, it easily floats up above. Anyways, helium isn't as abundant on Earth. Earth's atmosphere is only 0.0005% helium. Most of helium that can be used for air balance comes from natural gas, helium concentration of which can reach up to 7% in it. It's so because as a result of radioactive decay of uranium and thorium in Earth's crust, helium can accumulate in Earth's interior along with natural gas and not vanish in the atmosphere. If we extend the scope, however, in terms of abundance, helium will be second only to hydrogen among all the elements in all of the observable universe. Just imagine, all atoms that are heavier than helium are only 2% from the overall mass of matter. It's a great opportunity to feel how small we are in the universe. Most of helium in the universe is in the stars and in the atmosphere of gas giants, which like the universe contain 25% of helium from their whole mass. According to present-day data, most helium that is in the universe formed during the Big Bang about 40 billion years ago. Let us come down to Earth and consider these gas properties with the help of more tangible experiments. I have a small ampule filled with helium, which is stored at a very low pressure. That is roughly 100 of atmospheric pressure. Helium doesn't have a color and it is also doesn't have a smell. You may already know this if you ever played with helium and try to inhale this gas. However, such experiments are very dangerous because our cells don't breathe in helium. They need oxygen instead. It even made helium cylinder retailers add up to 20% of oxygen to helium in order to make having fun at parties safer. If high-frequency discharge of high voltage is passed through an ampule with helium, it will start glowing pale orange. Its brightness depends on the voltage and the ampule's diameter. I used a plasma lamp as a voltage source. It made it possible for me to hold the ampule right in my hand, because my body possesses capacitance like everybody else's body, for that matter. In contrast to neon or xeon, Helium can glow from a distance from the generator wire. Unfortunately, from the chemical point of view, helium doesn't have very interesting properties. It almost doesn't react with any chemical. Also, in the form of plasma similar to the one you can see in the ampule, helium can form extremely unstable compounds with hydrogen, deuterium or some metals. At high pressure of 100,000 atmospheres, there are even form special substances, clartate compounds of helium with nitrogen, which can be grown as crystals in a diamond anvil cell. There is no need to despair through because helium possesses the most interesting and unique physical properties among all elements. The thing is, when the temperature of helium is reduced to 4.2 kelvins, helium becomes the lightest fluid, density of which is almost 10 times smaller than that of water. It is so cold that some metals even become superconductors, for instance, like mercury or niobium. To maintain such a low temperature, liquid helium is stored in cryogenic storage devoir, which is also externally cooled off with nitrogen. The same technology of cooling helium is used in modern devices for creating nuclear magnetic resonance. Superconductors made from niobium are cooled off with liquid helium, which in turn is cooled off with cheaper nitrogen because of its being too expensive. Thus, liquid helium is used in medicine and scientific studies. The most interesting is still ahead of us. Until now, we have been talking about the first form of liquid helium. If helium is further cooled off by reducing pressure in the storage devices, the liquid will eventually reach so-called lambda point or, in other words, will be reduced to the temperature of 2.17 kelvins and will become the second form of liquid helium. 
After that, boiling of the liquid stops and it starts to exhibit completely different properties. At such temperatures, thermal conductivity of liquid helium increases by millions of times and becomes higher than that of copper and silver. That is why the liquid doesn't boil, because the heat is spread immediately and evenly through the entire material. Along with that, upon reaching the lambda point, helium becomes a superfluid, that is, it loses all viscosity, which is resistance of the one part of the fluid, the movement of the other part of it. There is a great experiment that proves that. If you pour some liquid helium into a small hanging bowl, the liquid will start creeping out the wall of the bowl. Besides, it easily passes through a layer of ceramic with one micrometer wide pores. The lower the temperature is, the easier it is for a superfluid to pass through barriers. It's also quite surprising that superfluid helium is still viscous, as can be seen from the second experiment. When the liquid is spun, the liquid layer actually passes rotation to the upper blades. What it is, after all, that is, when quantum mechanisms, whose behavior sometimes drastically differs from that of classical mechanics laws, come into play. Viscosity is both present and absent, that is how it can be characterized. By the way, superfluidity of liquid helium was first discovered by a Soviet scientist Pyotr Kapitsa in 1938 and in 1962 Lev Landau worked out the theory of this effect. Do you think that's it? Not at all. Now, let's talk about stars and cosmic travel. Until now, we were been talking about isotope helium-4, which has two protons and two nitrons. However, there is yet another rare isotope, helium-3, which has two protons and one nitron. The thing is, this isotope is perfect for conducting fusion reactions with deuterium. In theory, this process can help humanity substitute fossil fuel. But the problem is that this isotope is very rare on Earth, because it immediately vanishes in the atmosphere, whereas this isotope remains in Moon, which does not have an atmosphere. Hypothetically speaking, people could extract helium-3 from lunar dust and use it as a source of energy here on Earth. As for now through, it seems to be a fantasy. To sum up, we can say that such a simple seeming element as helium has surprising properties and is irrepressible in medicine for scanning human body. If you would like to support the continuous production of science videos like this one, please support channel on Patreon, link in the video description. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel to see many more new and interesting.